It says we're live. If we're live, if you're watching this, you know I'm new at this. I'm a realtor. I'm not a tech guy. My tech guy's out to lunch. Yeah. Um, all right. I think we're live. All right. Let's try this again. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am here uh, with uh, Jeff Roscoff. Jeff uh, and I met uh, about six, uh, six or seven months ago. Uh, and in full disclosure, Jeff is a licensed realtor with Keller Williams Prosperity Realty. But that's not all he does. Uh, Jeff actually is the owner of Always Home Healthcare. And did I say that right? Yeah, that's correct. Great. Um, see that? We, we had a mistake on the first one, and then I said the name wrong. So it actually works out the way it's supposed works to be. Works out. Um, and so, Jeff, why don't you uh, share with us what you do at, you, at Always Home? Healthcare. Sure. So uh, Always Home Healthcare is a private duty home health aid agency. And what we do is we provide home health aid, certified nursing assistants, and companions to elderly. Um, anyone who might need in-home in -home care, whether it's bathing, dressing, toileting, ambulation, and transfer. Um, a lot of times it could just be preventative. You know, someone's parents who may live a half hour away or something like that, they want someone to be implemented in the home to avoid a fall or something like that. The, um, they can also act as companions, someone just to help out with medication reminders, laundry, running some errands, transportation, something along those lines. Okay. Um, I imagine that uh, as, I, as I come across my clients who their kids usually want them out of the house, uh, meaning they want their parents to sell the house because they don't want them alone, uh, and there's a lot of uh, uh, parents, uh, elderly people, who are stubborn. They don't want to be. They don't want to go into any sort of a nursing facility. Um, is that tend to be the client, the people that uh, what do you call them, residents? Residents, correct. Um, it, it really depends at this this moment. I've noticed over the years, um, some like you or I might lean more towards leaving our family member in the home with private care, such as mine. Right. Someone who they can be a little bit more hands-on, and they don't have to send somebody to you know a nursing home. Um, but other times, you know, I've worked with residents who say it's it's just not feasible. We can't have a home health aide stay in there with mom. We want to get rid of the house, um, and we want to move them into an assisted living or uh, an independent living. So it's both sides. Okay. Um, and and so, how long you guys have been in business? So always home health care is we've been up and running for about a year and a half, but it's not just me. Um, I don't want to just leave out my partner, Lillian Hernandez. She started this with me as well. Okay. And, and so talk about, so you've been in business 18 months for the last, uh, uh two, two and a half months. We've, we've been faced with this, uh, <laughs> this, um, the, the, the virus, if you will, the coronavirus, and it's, it's done a lot to change the landscape of uh, of our world, quite frankly, of our lives and and business, to say the least. What has it done? I mean, you you you're you're helping residents prior to this. Has your business suffered? Has it has it uh, increased? Uh, are you helping more people now or less people? Talk about that for a minute. Sure. So when this first started, we, we were a little bit nervous because very quickly we saw um, a lot of our family members wanted to just discontinue services. Gotcha. Um, the simple fact that they themselves were going to be un unemployed. They didn't know where the money uh, was going to come from. Uh, the other aspect was, you know, now they can take care of their father or their mother. So they would, they wanna, they would do it. Um, but very quickly we realized that the facilities we work with, they were going to be losing their home health aides, because not only are they working in there, they're also helping other people and they've become exposed to the virus. And the precautions that these facilities had taken, if you, you know, they'd have to come in, uh, check their temperature, check some vitals. And if they were even at 99 degrees, they would be sending somebody home. Um, so one of my contacts that I had in a facility, they reached out to me and asked for floor staffing. And because of that, we were able to get a contract with one of these facilities throughout New Jersey and really help them out with floor staffing and gain a lot more of work through that. Nice. 
So, so in other words, uh, rather than, you know, uh, you might have lost a few one, uh, how do we call them, one-off clients uh, from uh, a relationship basis, but you've picked up a whole new uh, swath of business through um, a, a facility. Right. Why, uh, why you and why not another company? I mean, why did they pick you guys and why can't they handle it themselves? So I think they were, um, they reached out to a few companies. It just so happened that I had a relationship with one of the buildings and she said, Jeff, do you think you could help out with some floor staffing? We were able to help out and we did such a great job, not to toot our own horns, but she reached out to, to it. Yeah, I might as well, but she reached out to one of the regionals for all the buildings in the area. And she decided that she really enjoyed working with us. And she said, Jeff, you know what? I'm going to get you in touch with someone. Um, we're going to get you a contract for, you know, all of the buildings. And we just wow. ran with it. But we're not the only company in these buildings. They, they work with other companies, too, to help out staffing. Okay. Your people are registered nurses. Some are, some aren't. How, how, what's the so makeup of the people going to A home them? health aid agency that I, that I work with or that I own, uh, we have a registered nurse, which happens to be my wife. She, we hang her license so we can operate through her license for the Board of uh, Nursing. Um, the aides that we send out are licensed uh, home health aides or certified nursing assistants. Okay. Um, so they don't, they can't provide any kind of clinical care. Okay. So it sounds like you're helping more people now due to the yeah. uh, coronavirus, correct? No, we, we absolutely are. And honestly, as as we move forward into this pandemic, a lot of the families actually have called us back. Um, they do need the help. So they, you know, originally, like I said, we lost some families. We're still getting referrals from outside of uh, the facilities. Uh, you know, in, in my industry, in our industry, in real estate, <coughs> you're also in real estate, uh, I found that there's a lot of vendors who, you know, for instance, photographers. Um, I'd say half of the photography companies are like, they don't want to go into homes. You find in your industry, as far as home health aid, are there home health aid companies, health healthcare companies that are choosing or afraid to go into homes and help people? So I've heard from a few, a uh, few companies that they weren't taking on any new cases. Um, whether they're still doing that or not, I'm not too sure. A lot of times I don't know if, they, they may not want to disclose that information does no Jeff we're doing fine we're taking on new cases some say they aren't um, but I know just for the facilities outside of what I do they weren't taking new admissions so um, it, yeah both sides saw a lot of people didn't want to enter the buildings or they, they didn't want to go to work I'm just wondering if that had a, 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 an effect on your business did you pick up anything from that did you see anything do you notice anything to say hey we can't get XYZ company can you guys pick it up so I've there, like I said, there was a few companies that when I was reaching out to some of these facilities, they said, you know, we work, we typically work with this company, but they're not going to take on any new cases. Okay. Um, they might have turned down what I did with these facilities because um, a lot of the facilities did have residents there that were COVID positive. So they were a little bit nervous to send out their aides to these buildings because they would be exposed to it. Having said that, when I when I spoke to some of the um, directors over there, they said, Jeff, they're going to be working with our residents that don't have it. We're going to be keeping close uh, close tabs on them. So our aides wanted to work. And, you know, as long as we put the proper uh, precautions in place, they, they went to work. OK, um, if somebody has a um, if somebody has a family member who is in that. Uh, you know, again, I, I keep going to they don't yet already have uh, health care services at home. Um, in, in most cases, the people I come into contact with, um, you know, I have a handful of clients who say, oh, my kids want me to sell. They don't want me alone, but I don't want to be alone. So if somebody's in that situation where they have a, a, a parent getting up in age or that might be um, that might need assistance, what do they do? How do they how do they find a, a good home health aid service like yourself it's it's tough because a lot of people aren't educated on this the situation even when they're in the facility and they're you know if someone happened to go to rehab they're going to be discharged i need additional help they don't know what to do um 
I guess the first start, if you don't have an access to someone like myself or you haven't spoken to anybody in a hospital or a social worker, you know, you could always Google um, home health care and a bunch of names will come up. Um, prior to even jumping the gun and taking any type of initiative to, you know, take on services through a company, do your due diligence, speak to the representatives, make sure you're comfortable with who you're working with because, you know, sometimes there's just companies that just pop up out of nowhere just to make a quick buck. They don't really know how to, you know, follow the proper steps in order to take on a new resident. Some people are just looking for business, but um, yeah, you can reach out to a social worker. If you know any, um, you can Google it and just keep reaching out to, uh, you know, just do your, like, basically, basically what you're telling me is someone who has no idea how, where to go and I'm just in home, right? I got a mother. She's, she's uh, in, in an apartment. She lives by herself. She's fallen once. Um, I'm just not comfortable. I want someone to check in. So I, I can call you guys, obviously. I'm scrolling. Right the i'm scrolling your website alwayshomehealthcare.com i got that right right Hopefully. yep that's correct and so and i guess is there a body is there like you know you got you go to a restaurant or a car wash you go to yelp where is there reviews are there reviews are there is there a place where someone can go check up because like you said sure. you got to do your due diligence and I, I don't i don't want just anyone going to visit my mom or take care of my mom that's right. why that's why I'm not going to put her in a home. So, and I'm not. And by the way, mom, if you're watching this, this is not. I'm, this is hypothetical, <laughs> right? I'm not. We have no plans for you to go anywhere. Um, nor does she need it. She's a very young, a uh, sixty-year-old mom. Anyway, um, I digress. So, where would someone go to? to Eric, to the best way to approach it is if, like I said, if someone hasn't been in the situation where they have anybody to talk to, you can look. You can Google it. A lot of times, caring.com will come up. And caring.com is a source that they have been in touch with companies like myself, assisted livings, um, anybody in the healthcare field, and they'll reach out to you and they'll, they'll start giving you recommendations who, who to reach out to. Um, if that, if that, if that's something that you don't want to do, you can always call your physician. Um, usually they work with outside vendors. Um, okay. they can give you a recommendation. Okay. So there are physicians or, you know, just doctors who, know of a few a list of uh they have contacts correct okay. that makes sense um wh what would be like one i, I want to ask you like what what's the reason you got into this what is the the driving force behind um, um always home health care uh, sure. did you guys start this company um I had no plans to ever be in the healthcare field, Eric. I started off as a teacher, um, fourth grade and third grade. And I think I came to the end of my teaching career when it didn't really work out with the principal. I wasn't being offered a full-time position. And one of my friends had been working for a company in healthcare. They offered me a position. I wound up taking it. And after six or seven years, I realized this is something that, you know, if I'm going to be out there seven days a week, 24 seven, taking phone calls, I might as well build my own empire instead of somebody else's. So, um, you know, we, we made plans after I was let go that I would just start my own company. And since it's myself and Lillian, you know, this is going to be our bread and butter. We have to be out there. Okay. And is there, is there anything else like that you can share with any of the people who are watching this or will watch this, um, that would, um, inspire them to reach out to you if they have someone that they want um, to, to kind of get a consultation or find sure. out if it's the right fit. You know, I've, I've always followed the business model that anytime I, you know, for my company in healthcare, that anybody I reach out to is, is just what we were talking about before. They don't know how to get in touch with anybody. They don't really know anything about it. They don't know the process. How do I pay for something like this? Um, so if you have any questions at all, I have no problem with sitting down with you and reviewing all the steps involved. Um, whether you need my services or not, um, I also have preferred provider list that, you know, if you need to speak to somebody just for a position or, um, you know, one of these buildings you want to go to, I can help guide them um, just like for placement. So whatever they need, I can help them out with and they have insurance questions because home health agencies like myself, it's usually private pay. 
uh, we don't accept any type of um, insurance except for long-term care insurance. And a lot of times this isn't explained when people are left, you know, from a facility. So it does become a question, you know, Jeff, I don't know how to pay for this. Does Medicare cover this? Will my insurance cover it? Just use me as a source of information. That's okay. it. And, and, and that's a good question. You brought something up that I, 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 I failed to ask you. So do people typically use you in the home before they go to the next level of going to uh, uh, um, a nursing home? Or is it something where they're coming out of a nursing home and they use you? Or is it both? So there's two parts of a nursing home, Eric. If, if someone is in there temp, um, for short, short term, yeah. they're usually discharged. So they're going to come and they're, they're probably going to need my services. Um, they'll be provided visiting nurse services. But like I said, that's only about three hours a week. So they'll need additional care. Um, if they have a lot of nursing needs, skilled nursing, open wounds, IVs, or anything like that, I would probably recommend going to a long-term nursing facility for the simple fact that they're, they're always going to be around. I can't help with things like that. Um, but no, there's, you know, a lot of times, like I said, people are trying to keep their loved ones in home instead of go to the facility. So that's why they would reach out to us. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Well, look, man, I appreciate you spending, you know, 15 you know, sure. minutes, actually 20 minutes of your time in the first five minutes we were talking and and nothing was happening here. Um, you know, I, I really, uh, you know, what was stood out to me when you and I had our consultation about how to build your real estate business was that um, coming from a teaching background, I always found that teachers aren't teaching to get rich. You know, they do it because they like to help and they like kids and they like to help kids. Um, and my, what, what I noticed in that going from teaching to this business um, was similar in that you're, it's a service-based business. Yeah. You know, it's a serve, you know, you're a servant uh, in that respect and that you like to help people. And, and so that's why I asked you to come on. Uh, I think it's, um, I think it's important in my business uh, to be in the this uh, service mind frame, uh, come from that service mindset, um, and and you do so. I I respect that in you, and I wanted to share that with uh, people in my world. Um, if, if anybody has any questions, you can go to the website. Uh, you can contact. Why don't you uh, throw out? This is recorded, so they can go back to this. Why don't you share uh, a contact phone number that they can sure. get? You? What's your phone number? You can reach me directly at 973-652-6050. 6050. Uh, Jeff, again, I appreciate you spending time with me. Uh, Thank you for having me, John. Uh, Eric, sorry. That's all right, Eric, John, John. Um, and um, if, uh, if anyone has any questions, reach out to Jeff. Uh, and uh, I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Have a good Thank one. You, you got it. Bye-bye.